Hey, this is Brock Lemire's Embedded Systems Design. We are looking at the SPI interface on the MSP430, and we in this video, we're going to look at how to use the Slave Transmit Enable, or STE line, when we send a packet of data. Okay, so remember the Slave trans, Transmit Select is a enable line that's generated by the master, and it tells... It's used when you have multiple slaves and you can use it in, you can configure multiple slaves uh, in either a daisy chain or a bust situation. And how you use the logic of STE is basically when it's asserted, the slave knows that something's coming in. And when it's not asserted, uh, the slave basically ignores clocks and ignores any data that's coming in. And slave transmit enable, also called a SS uh, for slave select on some data sheets, uh, it's it's built into the peripheral, okay? So when you look at the MSP430 SPI peripheral, it's got four automatically generated signals, okay? Obviously, it's got S-clock, it's got a CMOM, slave in, master out, it has slave out, master in, but it also has a transmit enable controller that generates automatically this slave transmit enable. So this is pretty sweet because if you, if you want to use it, it's there and you just need to configure it. Note by default that we are in three wire mode for the SPI system, which means you don't have slave transmit enable. So if you wanna use this, you have to turn it on, okay? So there's two bits in our main control register or configuration register that turn on this STE. One of them is UC mode and one of them is UC stem. And so these bits are how you turn this on. So let's take a look at uh, the, the uh, control word register zero in spy mode. First of all, UC mode is where you turn it on. And note here, it, there's actually two bits in UC mode, and that gives you four different settings. So zero, zero is what it comes out of in reset, and that puts it in three pin spy. So that means that you don't have, this pin is not used. If you do want to use it, you choose either zero, one or one, zero, and that's going to give you either four pin with STE active high or four pin STE with active low. Okay, that should be low right there. <laughs> and so uh, that's how you turn it on. And then there's another bit that controls how it's used. And so STE basically uh, is the, the how the master treats these. And so if it's zero, it's used to prevent conflicts with other masters. And that is when you have multiple masters on a spy system. So that is possible to wire it up like that. Usually you don't, usually you just have one spy. But if you have multiple masters, then there's a situation where a master might be enabling, or two masters might be enabling this the same slave. And so it's got some, it's got like a, uh, some behavior that it can, you know, do when that situation happens. Uh, usually what you do, though, is you set STE because then it's just used as the standard enable signal for a four-wire slave. So that's the standard use for it is enabling it. Okay, so then uh, <clears throat> that's basically all there is to it. So why don't we do an example where we, why don't we take the code that we did last time where we sent a packet and we will this time put that same code on there and we'll look at, we'll enable STE this time. And so we'll just turn those on, that's all we're gonna do. And then what we'll do is we'll observe it with the logic analyzer and we'll see its behavior across sending four packets, okay? So we're gonna use the same code that we did last time. If you don't have it, uh, you can pause <laughs> the video and look at the code that I have. So here is the first page of code. It's the same code that we did last time. We set up a universal packet, uh, a, or a global variable that is an array of four bytes. And then we set up a position variable which tracks the index of these. And then all we did was we put the system in reset, we configured the A0 peripheral. So we chose SM clock, we're gonna divide it by 10 to get 100 kilohertz S clock. We put it in unsync mode, or excuse me, synchronous mode, which means it's SPI versus UART on A0. Then we put it in master mode. And then we have three lines that we have to add here. So we have to do, we have to put the mode into four pin SPI with an active, we'll do active low first. And so what we do is we, we have a one zero setting on this register right here. So we're gonna go one zero. So this is active low where my mouse is, I'll fix that later. <laughs> and then what we need to do is we put it into the normal slave transmit enable mode, which is basically we set UC stem. And what that does is then it's the STE is treated as just a standard enable. 
The, only, the other thing we have to do though, is you have to remember that this is on a port, okay? So this is on port one bit four. So we have to go into the port one select or function select registers and tell it, hey, excuse me, MSP430, don't use this pin as a port, use it as the STE line of peripheral A0. Okay, so that's all we're gonna do. So let's do it. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and fire up. We're gonna make a new project because we wanna keep this separate. So we'll go file, new, file, new, CCS project, and go ahead and call it, uh, call it C and then spy, and then this is our third transmit example. We'll do packet on a zero uh, with TX IFG and then with SDE, SDE, and we'll do it negative to begin. Okay, so go ahead and power that up. Now you have your blank blank program in here, and here's what we're gonna do. Go ahead and control A and nuke everything in there. So now I wanna grab the code from last time, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my Project Explorer, and if you don't see that, just go view uh, Project Explorer right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my last transmit example project, and if you don't have that code, go watch the prior video and it walks through how we came up with this. So I open that up and I'm gonna open the main and here's my program. So I'll go ahead and control A and then I'll control C and then I come over here and I do a control V. So now I have everything that I need. So I go ahead and close that dude and I'm back to, I'll go ahead and minimize that. Okay, so now this is my active project and I save this and I'm sitting here and I look through it again. So here's my global variables. I come through, here's my setup for the spy. I put it in a software reset choose it, SM clock, divide by 10, put it in synchronous mode, make it the master. And now here's where I configure my bits. Remember that I set up a switch one interrupt. So on port four bit one, I turn this to an input and then I enabled the pull up resistor and I made it a pull up and I made the edge sensitivity on the interrupt sensitive to high to low. And now here's where I come down and, and I set up port one bit five as S clock to use S clock. I set up port one bit seven to use slave and master out. I set up port one bit six to use slave out master in. And I'm gonna copy that code right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste it. And now all I need to do is I just need to say port one bit four is actually uh, slave transmit enable. And so all I do is I come over here and I'm gonna change that to bit four. Okay, so now I've got the pin configured. And so now let's, uh, I kind of jumped over the last configuration here in <laughs> this. So now I have some settings that I have to do. So let's do this one right here. I need to do uh, UC mode equals, we're going to do one zero, which means uh, four pin with active low STE. Okay, so I need to set these bits. Now here's how I have to do this. I have to actually do two statements here. So I look at the ST, UCA, let's go UCA uh, zero, CTLW zero. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set, okay? And I there's these masks in there that are really cool. They correspond to the bits that are in UC mode. And I have UC mode one, and that stands for uh, position one of this mask, or yeah, position one of these uh, bit fields, okay? And so then what I can do here is I can actually go up and go, all right, I'm gonna go to UCA0, CTLW0, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear UC mode zero, okay? So that's how I can, that's how I tell these UC mode bits to be one zero. Now you're looking at that and you're like, well, I probably could have accepted the default value for the least significant position, but I want What I'm going to do is I'm going to run this once and I'm going to change these. So I want to change it to active high so that I <laughs> have the code in there already. Okay. The last thing is just to tell it to, to use, uh, use STE as normal, uh, enable. Okay. And so that is done in this one. So it's UCA zero control word zero. And what I do is I set the UC stem bit, okay? All right, so that is that is really all I need to do. If I look at what my code's gonna do, remind myself, uh, I'm gonna have an uh, interrupt that is on the switch one, and then I enable my transmit interrupt on the peripheral. And then what I do is I come down and I'm gonna have an interrupt service routine so that when I hit switch one, I'm gonna drop the first 
byte in my packet into the transmit buffer and it sends it. And then I initialize, obviously I initialize the position uh, variable, which is the index for my array to zero. And then when the thing gets done, when it's transmitted and it's shifted completely out, the transmit flag will be asserted and that will fire this uh, interrupt service routine associated with my A1 uh, vector or peripheral A0. What it does is it increments the position to go to the next byte in the packet and then it makes sure that uh, that you're still, that you're not at the end of the packet. It goes ahead and dumps the next byte into the transmit buffer other and then it's sent out. Otherwise, it goes ahead and just clears a flag and that basically ends the ends the transmission by not writing to anything. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that up. And we'll go ahead and it's asking me what do you want to do? So hope shouldn't have any typos. We didn't write that much code. <laughs> okay, cool. So now let's go ahead and look at the board. So I got my board right here and I'm gonna look at the pins. Let's look at the the uh, STE and the S clock and uh, master out with the logic analyzer. Okay, so I'm gonna use the analog discovery and I'm gonna use the built-in protocol uh, debugger, or not debugger, but decoder in uh, the, the logic analyzer software. So we'll hook these up, but I wanna look at the default settings of the hookup so that I just match uh, what it wants or what it expects. And so I don't even have to change anything. So I'm gonna go into waveforms here and I'm gonna go down to logic. And what I wanna do is I wanna come over to the left and I'm gonna go spy so it's going to add spy signals and so here is kind of what it expects by default so when i go back to my board uh notice that the select line is on channel zero so what i can do is i can grab channel zero and i can plug that into port one bit four and then it it thinks that by default the clock will be on channel one so i grab channel one and i go to port one bit five and then it expects data on Channel two, so I grab channel two, and I plug, plug that in to port one bit seven, and now I'm ready to go minus my ground. So let me grab my ground, and pop that on right there. And then now I'm ready. Okay, so the only other setup that I have here is I need to change this to LSB and then I go add. Okay, so now I'm ready to go. Okay, so I'm in the logic analyzer tool. I need to set up my trigger so remember on this one, uh, the easiest trigger is to look for a pulse that's less than something on the clock. So we'll go ahead and look at, the clock is on DIO channel one. And what we'll do is the first time you see a little clock, a pulse, positive pulse that is less than six microseconds, that'll be the first S clock. It'll trigger and align the measurement to the center of the screen. Okay, so now I'm ready to go. Remember, I'm gonna go ahead and hit a single run then I'm gonna press the button. So I go single and I press the button. So single, oh, <laughs> you gotta run the, run the program first. So let's go into here and let's go ahead and run our program and let's go back to waveform. And now we're gonna go single run. Oh, cool. there it is. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna, I see the data here. It didn't capture the last part on the screen so I'm gonna have to run it again. So go ahead and go single run. And now I got it. Now check this out. So here's our original packet, F0, 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 F0 F0, and look at STE. So STE was automatically generated. It went low before the first clock. So it gave the slave time to be enabled. And then it gave it 32 clocks and it sent the data LSP first, and then it disabled the STE and life is good. And that was all done automatically for us. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's do this. Let's see how easy it is to switch it to an active high. So I come back to code composer. And if I want to change this to an active high, I can just do this. So I can go one zero and I'll say I'm going to active high. And then all I have to do is I need to clear this bit right here. And then I need to set this bit. And now let's see what happens. So I go ahead and load that down there. And no typos, no typos, no typos. Done, done, done. Come on, come on, come on. And oh my goodness. And okay, I got it and I'm gonna run. Okay, so I go back to logic analyzer. There was my last waveform. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do single and I go run. And look at, look at what happened. Oh, STE changed polarities. So this is great, but my data is gone. <laughs> so it's like, what happened to my data? And so what's happening is if you come over here and you 
configure this spy bus. One of the things that we didn't even look at when we set up before, the default for STE when in this decoder is active low. So it was already set to low and we're like, whatever, we just kind of blasted through this. But the, the analog discovery is actually displaying the data based upon whether the select line, it, on whether it sees the select line. So if I wanna be able to also see data in the analog discovery, I have to come in here and say, I've changed this to be an active high now, so now you can display the data. So now what I did here is, it actually added another one, so let me nuke this, uh, let's do this. So I nuke that, then there's my data right there. So now when I run it, I go single run, single run. And so that's, we have to tell the analog discovery, hey, this is active high now, and it displays the data. So there's everything. Now look at my data is messed up, right? Because why is that? Because I didn't, I have to set an MSB first. And there you go, F0, 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 40. Okay, awesome, you did it. All right, that, so that is it. Nice work, uh, Very kind of simple. Uh, it's automatically turned on for you, but that's how you use the Slave Transmit Enable. All right, that's all. Nice work, as always. Support my channel by subscribing, and see ya.